I first came to Oxford at the age of 18 to study engineering and the city cast a spell over me then as it does now. Although I left for a while, I soon came back and for the last 20 years I've been living within sight of that sweet city with its dreaming spires, as Matthew Arnold put it. I'm fortunate enough to have found a home in the countryside just outside Oxford within easy reach of my favourite city. When I was a student studying engineering here in the 1970s, I quickly realised what an amazing scientific legacy Oxford had bequeathed. Let me show you a few of them. I'm sitting in my Morris Minor outside the garage in Longwall Street where William Morris set up shop in 1902 repairing bicycles and subsequently cars. He started manufacturing his own cars a few years later, which were aptly named the Morris Oxford. William Morris was one of the most successful industrialists of his time and gave away over a hundred million pounds in his lifetime, much of which was used to fund medical research to this day. Alexander Fleming is credited with having invented penicillin, but it was actually here in Oxford in 1940 that Howard Florey and his team isolated the active ingredient of penicillin and used it to uh, demonstrate the effectiveness on penicillin in living creatures for the first time, uh, curing some mice of an infection. And the following year, they trialled it on the first human, a local Oxford policeman, and it went on to become a blockbuster drug and has been credited with saving an estimated 200 million lives. Howard Florey and Alexander Fleming were jointly awarded the Nobel Prize for their amazing work. Work done in Oxford in the early 1980s led to the development of a new sensor that enabled people with diabetes to more accurately measure their, and monitor their blood sugar levels. This test required the tiniest pinprick of blood and was more accurate than existing sensors. And it was subsequently commercialized by an Oxford company that was bought by a US diagnostics firm for $800 million. In the process, transforming the lives of tens of millions of diabetics around the world. In 1980, John Goodenough and his team of researchers identified a special material which enabled the development of the rechargeable lithium ion battery. This ushered in an era of portable electronic devices and of course electric cars. And John Goodenough went on to be awarded the Nobel Prize in 2019. From generating game-changing renewable technologies to finding new ways of curing cancer, I'm going to introduce you to some of Oxford's finest minds and show you how these transformative ideas are bursting forth from my city like never before.